setups. Now this is probably going to be a little more sports specific than any of the other talks that I've had but I suggest and submit and probably recommend or and to say it another way there's probably setups for all types of sports but this again is going to be a little more particular to wrestling. What are setups and how do we use them and why do we need to learn them? Uh, if you just watched the vision segment and or video of coach Shannon talks you may have a little bit of uh, inspiration to understand why the, the setups are important setup essentially is, is exactly what it says it is a skill or a movement to get me to my destination in other words I've been using double X throughout the talks and headlocks and whatnot and arm bars and halves I will use those examples to give you a, a real good explanation of why you probably already know why but I'm just going to try to explain expound and expound and show you the importance of setup if I want to do a double leg rather than just you know telling a person hey I'm getting ready to do a double leg you know in a wrestling match if I say that they'll probably counter me really quickly in order for me to, to use a setup that is somewhat of a disguise and somewhat of a trick it should keyword should it should have several options off of it in other words if I do an arm drag depending on what that person does that's a setup but it can also be a go behind right in wrestling I could do an arm drag to an arm throw I could do an arm drag to a fake to either one of those skills I could do an arm drag to a double leg what's the key component the arm drag is the key component which is the setup for a variety of skills and that's what I want you to kind of think about and focus on said another way and maybe the opposite of that arm drag double leg I'm, let's say I'm wrestling in a competition arm drag double leg this is an actual live competition if I do it again arm drag double leg what do you think my opponent is going to do if that opponent has any vision any anticipatory skills any kind of uh, pattern recognition they will indeed likely on the second or the third arm drag double leg they will counter my shot either score or they'll just stop my attack so can you see the importance of having a setup initially so I can disguise what I'm going to do if I do an arm drag and I've got one two three options off of it or maybe I've got two options or maybe I've only got one option uh, the key would be if I have more than one option my opponent is less likely to be able to counter me and that is uh, that is the essence of a setup number one a setup should be a disguise for your attack number two a setup should have one to two to three options now you don't I don't believe need to have 55 options however if you have 55 options that may be you may be able to uh, really trick your opponent I suggest you probably need two or three options per setup and sometimes the best setup of all is just uh, no setup in other words sometimes when you you're coming from out of bounds and the whistle blows you go out of the circle and you come back to the center and you stand there and the whistle blows immediately when the whistle blows you can do some type of an attack and you're now you're using I said no setup but now you're using the whistle as your initial setup and how is that effective and how can that work in offensive attacks and counter offense I'll give some counter offense examples here in a second but I just I, did, I think I went over counter offense in the last segment when I was talking about vision uh, so this this time I'm kind of focusing on offense uh, the the whistle blow is actually the setup with an offensive movement coming out of bounds a lot of times people are asleep at the at the will so to speak when the whistle blows a lot of times people are unprepared I'll give you a prime example of that uh, in the last Olympic quad 2004 and you probably know both of these people one of these people made two Olympic teams Clarissa Chun at the time was not an Olympian she beat a former past Olympic medalist Patricia Miranda and now you can you know YouTube and Google that and probably watch the match within you know four seconds she took her down she was actually losing that match I think it was the third uh, it may have been the second match or it might have been a third and deciding match can't can't recall doesn't matter the point is as soon as the whistle blew, she shot it and she took her down. I don't think Patricia was ready for that shot. So I'm, I'm giving you an example of a setup that is a non-setup. It was a setup based off of the whistle. So uh, again, just what I've covered so far. Arm drag to 
a double leg or an arm throw or a, an arm drag or a fake, you have several options off of the skill that you're doing to disguise your attack. A nine setup is what I'm calling it for lack of a better way to say it. The whistle blows because most opponents are not ready right when the whistle blows and you have to vary your attacks and that's the kind of the third point I want to make. If I shoot every time we come from out of the center circle back to the center, every time the whistle blows I shoot, now what happens? Again, if that person is smart and aware, they have developed that pattern recognition, which means they're going to anticipate when the whistle blows, I'm going to take a shot. Now I may be in a bad scenario or a bad situation. So in other words, you have to mix either mix up your setups or you can have one setup that has a couple of different options. Alternatives is a better way to say it too. With the whistle blowing technique, you want to have several different options for that. Maybe the first time the whistle blows in the beginning of the match, I'll, I'll give you three examples. The first time the whistle blows in the beginning of the match, you hit her with a fake or you hit your opponent with a fake. The second time the whistle blows, you don't do anything. You're waiting for her to attack. You're thinking, okay, I'm going to plan. She's probably going to shoot off the whistle I'm going to wait for. The third time you come from out of bounds, the whistle blows, you attack. Now you've done three specific movements from the whistle blow, so you've varied your attack just like on the arm drag. You varied your attack to either an arm drag and you do nothing, or an arm drag to a fake, an arm drag to an arm throw, depending on how my opponent reacts, an arm drag to a double leg, depending on how my opponent reacts. And that's that's a key factor too. I guess the third or fourth point would be, depending on what your opponent does from your setup, will dictate the skill that you are going to execute. Does that make sense? So, in other words, you you have to do a little bit of what I talked about in that last video, video segment. You have to have a little bit of vision and you have to have a little bit of anticipatory skills based on what your setup is and how do we develop that again. You design and develop most of your setups. Again, this is uh, probably I'm beating a dead horse here. I'm beating a drum that you've heard before. I'm singing that same song. Just, you know, analogies and metaphors for you to get to, to, get, to get to this point. Practice. Practice is the key essential uh, component of, of learning and trying to master just about everything. So I need to practice. Okay, when I do an arm drag, I need you to move that way. And you, you either your coach or you can describe that to your partner, explain to your partner. I want, you, I want your hips to go that way when I do an arm drag. So if when your hips go that way, maybe now I can hit an arm throw. This time when I do an arm drag, I want you to pull your leg back. So when she, I do an arm drag, she pulls her leg back, you can attack the other side. This time, I, I need you to sprawl when I do an arm drag. I do an arm drag, she sprawls, and I do a go behind. And you practice those over and over again. And then you, you tell them, I don't, want, I don't want to know what you're going to do. So now you develop that reaction based on whatever the, the point gives you. So you have to use a little bit of vision, and you have to anticipate. As soon as you do it, you feel that reaction, and then you automatically go to your attack. Does that make sense? Uh, the second the second scenario would be the same thing. I'm just giving you two examples. Man, there are a multitude of different examples. From the whistle blow, you, you hit her with a fake. Now, if she falls to her knees, maybe front headlocker and you go behind her. You hit her with a fake. She doesn't do anything. So now, okay, the next time I whistle blow, I'm going to attack because preceding that, she didn't react off of that fake. Kind of see where I'm going there. So I'm anticipating her doing the same thing again. A lot of times, man, if you watch video and you watch your own matches, you'll notice People tend to do the same thing. The best of the best, they, they change it up all the time, and that's why they're really elusive and really you know, difficult to, uh, to figure out what they're doing. So again, just to, in a quick review, the setups are designed to disguise your attacks. And I've given you two examples of setups, one from a whistleblow, and that could be called a nine setup. I'm going to you know, feed my opponent a certain specific movement to get her to do anything so that I can have a, an option to go to and an arm drag attack. I'm going to arm drag her and I'm going to anticipate what she's going to do next. But the whole general idea is you have several setups or one setup and you're looking for a bunch of different reactions and then you anticipate the skill so that you can get what you need. I just used two examples. Now, all of your skills should be that way, right? Part to your bottom. I turn this way, I'm anticipating her doing something. If, if I'm down, I need to get the heck off the bottom and score a uh, counter-offense on your feet. I am going to be a counter-offensive wrestler. I'm going to put my foot right here, and as soon as and that's the setup. As soon as she does this, I'm going to do that. So uh, just kind of two more examples there of how setups can and will be effective for you. Again, you need to practice a bunch of different scenarios, and if you have a competent coach, they're, you know, they're teaching you these skills and they're putting you in all these various different positions so that 
when it is time for you to execute a skill, you can execute it based on your setups. Does that make sense? Hopefully all of those don't do make sense. And if not, watch this video again. It may become a little more clear to you and or ask your coach questions about setups and how they can become effective. I guess I haven't really stated that in any of these videos. A lot of these things that I'm talking about, if they do make sense to you, fabulous. If they don't make sense to you, ask your coach or ask another wrestler or ask someone that, that you perceive, who you perceive to be an expert and then ask somebody else because a lot of times um, one person may have a different reaction or a different definition than someone else and what you need to do and this is essentially what research is you need to gather a bunch of different responses and then make your own conclusion and that is an, another lesson I, I think on how you can become a critical thinker and you can become a student of the sport. Setups Remember, you can find out more information like this at youtube.com, Coach Shannon, Coach Shannon Talks.